The mean value theorem relates the average rate of change of a function on an interval to its instantaneous rate of change, or derivative. Let's assume that f is a function defined on a closed interval a, b, and maybe defined in some other places too. Let's assume that f is continuous on the whole closed interval, and that it's differentiable on the interior of the interval. Then the mean value theorem says that there must be some number c in the interval a, b, such that the average rate of change of f on a, b is equal to the derivative of f at c. In symbols, we can write the average rate of change as f of b minus f of a over b minus a, and that has to equal f prime at c for some number c. On the graph, the average rate of change of f is the slope of the secant line. And so the mean value theorem says that there's some number c somewhere in between a and b so that the slope of the secant line is exactly the same as the slope of the tangent line at that x value of c. The number c is not necessarily unique, so I encourage you to pause the video and see if you can draw a graph of a function where there's more than one c value that works. So you might have drawn something maybe like this. Now if we draw our secant line, there's two values of c where the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line. In this example, we're asked to verify the mean value theorem for a particular function on a particular interval. Verify means that we need to check the hypotheses of the theorem hold and also that the, that the conclusion holds. The hypotheses are that f is continuous on the closed interval, 1, 3, and that it is differentiable on that interior of that interval. Both of these facts are true because f is a polynomial. Now we need to verify that the conclusion of the mean value theorem holds. In other words, we need to find a number c in the interval 1, 3, such that the derivative of f at c is equal to the average rate of change of f on the interval from 1 to 3. Now f prime of x is 6x squared minus 8, so f prime at any number c is just 6c squared minus 8. We can also compute f of 3 just by plugging in and get 31, and f of 1 is negative 5. Plugging in these values into our equation, we get that 6c squared minus 8 has to equal 31 minus negative 5 over 2. In other words, 6c squared minus 8 had better equal 18, which means that 6c squared needs to equal 24, so c squared has to equal 4, which means that c has to equal plus or minus 2. Since negative 2 is not in the interval from 1 to 3, we're left with a c value of positive 2. So c equals 2 is the number we're looking for. And at c equals 2, f prime is equal to 18, which is the average rate of change of f on the interval. We've verified the mean value theorem. In this example, we're told that f of 1 is 7, and that the derivative of f is bounded between negative 3 and negative 2 on the interval 1, 6. We're asked to find the biggest and smallest values that f of 6 could possibly be. Well, the mean value theorem gives us one way of relating the derivative of the function to its values on the endpoints of the interval. More specifically, the mean value theorem tells us that the average rate of change f of 6 minus f of 1 over 6 minus 1 is equal to the derivative f prime of c for some c in the interval 1, 6. 
since the derivative is bounded between negative 3 and negative 2, we know that the average rate of change is bounded between negative 3 and negative 2. We know that f of 1 is 7, and now we can solve this inequality for f of 6. I'll multiply the inequality by 5 and add 7. And now we can see that negative 8 is the smallest possible value for f of 6, and negative 3 is the largest possible. Rolle's theorem is an important special case of the mean value theorem. If f is a function defined on the closed interval a, b, and f of x is continuous on that whole closed interval, differentiable on the interior of the interval, and if f of a is equal to f of b, then there's a number c in the interval a, b such that f prime of c is zero. If we look at a graph of such a function that has equal values at a and at b, we can see where its derivative has to be zero at a maximum or a minimum in between a and b. To see why the Rolle's theorem is a special case of the mean value theorem, think about what the mean value theorem would say about this function. It would say there is a c such that f prime of c is equal to the average rate of change of the function. But since f of b and f of, of a are the same by our assumption, this average rate of change is just zero. And so the mean value theorem's conclusion is that there's a c such that f prime of c equals zero, which is exactly the conclusion of Rolle's theorem. In this video, we saw that for a function that's continuous on a closed interval and differentiable on the interior of that interval, the average rate of change of the function is equal to the instantaneous rate of change of the function f prime of c for some c in the interval.